When the UK government announced the 2040 sales ban on petrol and diesel vehicles, not only did it seem a lifetime away, but the electric vehicles on sale at the time didn't seem to offer much in terms of range and towing capability. Now, when this deadline was uh, brought forward 10 years, 2030 didn't seem so far away. And if I'm honest, the thought of towing a caravan seemed an impossible one. However, EVs or electric vehicles have come an awful long way. Uh, which means, in theory, it's possible to go caravanning with the cars that are on sale at the moment. Sure, the likes of Mercedes, Jaguar and Audi um, offer towing, well, tow-ready vehicles at the moment, but the price of some of those, are, 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 for me, are eye-watering, out of the reach of many, myself included. Now, Tesla has arguably been the benchmark of electric vehicles, with the Model X stealing the show some time ago. But then the Model 3 came along, and most importantly, it had a towing option. But along with that came the theories about range anxiety and how far you would actually get before those batteries went flat. And then I had a phone call asking if I'd like to borrow a Model 3 and a Bailey Discovery D42 um, to see if it's possible to go caravanning for the weekend. But no matter how many times I did the calculations or looked at various theories online, it seemed that as though people were, were saying they were towing a trailer, but they were very light trailers, sort of two, three, four hundred kilos. But is it possible to tow a caravan that weighs 995 kilos? And as much as my limited math skills were deployed, I couldn't come up with a, a theoretical range figure that, that seemed sort of accurate in the real world. So I thought I would jump in feet first. And thanks to the Bailey of Bristol team, I've borrowed a Model 3 dual motor long range, along with a Bailey Discovery D42, um, to see if we can go caravanning to a site that's 100 miles away. Now, importantly, this is a test to see where we are at the moment in terms of technology and infrastructure. Um, I'm not saying this is how it will be in 2030 when uh, obviously the sale of petrol and diesel vehicles are banned. Um, this is a caravanning weekend now in 2021 uh, with me and my son, Charlie. Now, full disclosure, I'm a petrol head. I always consider the engine, be it two stroke or four stroke, to be at the heart of any vehicle, bikes or cars. Uh, so this will be a very subjective test on electric vehicles um, just to see where they are at the moment, whether we can go caravanning with one. Right, it turns out the range anxiety is a very real thing. Um, to try and skew the odds in our favour a little bit and to make sure that my 13 year old son won't be pushing the car and car around the final few miles to site, what I've done is I've towed the Bailey Discovery 55 miles from the factory in Bristol to my house in Dorset. Um, now, I'd got six miles into the journey and I'd lost a hundred miles of range. Now this is a long range uh, car and it had a theoretical range on the screen of 376 miles, which seems an, a huge amount for, for a, um, an electric vehicle. As I say, six miles in, it lost a hundred miles. So I was thinking, God, I mean, am I going to get home? I mean, obviously it was adjusting for the conditions and also for the weight of the caravan um, to try and sort of give a more accurate um, range as the journey progressed. But you know, when, when you're in here and you think I've got 55 miles to go and there's no real data to tell me whether I'll get home, um, yeah, that certainly adds to it. And also talking of adding to it, the weather was against us as well. Um, we, the journey from the factory to Dorset takes me over the Mendip Hills. Um, again, those hills are gonna hammer battery life. But what I will say is up the hills, geez, the torque of this thing it's as though you're just looking out of the windscreen and you can see the see the hill, but it has absolutely no effect on this car whatsoever. The torque is just insane. Um, I mean, obviously that's going to affect the battery life, as did the wind. Now we had 48 mile hour winds up over the Mendips. Um, not ideal, especially two thirds of the journey seemed to be with, with crosswinds hammering the side of the caravan and about, I don't know, a quarter of it with a headwind against us. So, you know, that made the journey interesting to say the least, but it raised a couple of really good points. Now, stability wise, I just cannot underline how stable this was. Now, I normally tow uh, a larger caravan, I've towed a Bailey Phoenix 650, 
and I've towed a twin axle 760 before that with my Mercedes Vito diesel. That's a 2.2 diesel uh, long wheelbase. Now that thing is super stable, or so I thought, until I got in this. Now, I don't know if this is correct, but this is purely my theory. If the batteries are low down, that will give you a really low center of gravity. Now, looking along the car, are those batteries in line with, um, with the tow ball? If so, you know, if you've got the caravan acting as a sail with the wind trying to move it, is that energy going to be transmitted straight into that tow ball and follow that line of batteries, which is the heaviest part of the car? Now, there might be two other factors as well. This isn't a massive caravan. This is a two berth caravan. So there's less surface area to act as a sail. And also, this Discovery has um, a slightly longer A-frame than normal that, that is designed to put a, um, a bike rack or a luggage compartment on there as well. Now, longer A-frames tend to add to stability. So it's either the car, the size of the caravan, the A-frame, uh, or a combination of all three things. Now, importantly, as that range test went, it gives us some hope that we can get to the campsite. Um, we're gonna use the campsite to charge up as well. There's no fast charger points. We'll be into a, a domestic socket like I was at home. Now, when I arrived, arrived home, it was telling me that I still had 100 miles of range left, uh, which is you know amazing, really. And um, I'd used 40% of the battery. Now, looking on the screen here, my um, my watts per mile average was 454. That's 454 watts per mile. Now, I looked on the Tesla website, and I think the standard solo car version was about 260 watts per mile. So, obviously, it's made a big difference towing that, but I've still got well, more range than I thought, to be fair. Um, to charge it up overnight, and I plugged this into a standard three-pin domestic socket. I've got no fast charger at home. Like I say, I'm in the middle of Dorset. There's, there's not a lot of infrastructure in Dorset anyway. Um, to tow 40, uh, to fill up 40% of the long-range battery took me 15 hours and 40 minutes. So doable, but I think obviously if you know if you've got one of these every day, you would need a, a dedicated charging point here to sort of ease that pain a little bit. So what we're going to do is uh, set off in a minute. We're going to go and stay at a campsite right in the south of Dorset and see how we do. So uh, yeah, wish us luck. I um, had one more thought about why the Tesla and the Discovery might be so stable. The, both major clubs, the Caravan and Motone Club and the Camping and Caravaning Club, they both recommend a maximum outfit ratio, that's the weight between the car and the caravan, of 85%. Now, if you're more experienced at towing, you can go up to 100% or, you know, or less um, you're close to your tow car's limit. Um, but this weighs 1,800 and something kilos, and the caravan's 995. Now, if I've got my maths right, that gives us a combination of 58%. So that will help with stability because the car's an awful lot heavier um, than the caravan. And while I think of it, um, we're going down through Dorset at the moment. What have we covered, Charlie? Charlie's on camera at the moment. I have no clue. I don't know, what, eight, 10 miles? Yeah. Uh, I haven't touched a brake yet. Uh, it must save you a fortune on brake pads. All I'm using is the regen. So whenever I let my foot off the throttle, I'm just letting, letting this do the work. Um, and even if I'm coming up to roundabout, I can hear the brakes on the caravan coming in. So um, yeah, quite impressive, really. Right, so we come around a sharp bend now. If Charlie points the camera out the front now. We'll just do a little bit of acceleration, just for the hell of it, really. Not too much, because we've got two push bikes in the back of the caravan. Um, Bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that was, what was that, a quarter throttle, I suppose? Yeah, mad. So the way we're charging is the caravan's plugged into that bollard there, and then the Tesla is plugged into a, a normal three-pin socket um, in the kitchen of the caravan. 
Now what I've done at the moment is um, I've reduced the charge rate in the car to six amps or one kilowatt. Now that's exactly half of what I could get from this pitch. Um, because I want to run the heating or hot water in here and I can top that back up again um, in about 16 hours. I mean, obviously I could do it in half of that, but I still, I want to have that, that sort of balance between using everything in here and not tripping the bollard by having the Tesla on too high. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, yeah, so the aim of uh, this weekend was to see, okay, let me shut my window, was just how far this could go. Um, I'm glad we did, because rather than sort of set out on a, on a hundred mile journey, keeping our fingers crossed that we would get there, um, as we set off this morning, this thing says we have a 158 mile predicted range, um, which is good. Um, what's next on the list, Charlie? Um, what we did this weekend. Oh yeah. So this weekend we um, we went out, as I said, we, we chose the site based on the mountain bike trail. So we spent the afternoon pedaling around the Seeker Trail, um, you know, proving to Charlie that I'm not quite as unfit as, as he might have thought I was. And then we had a cheeky pint in the pub. So yeah, no, great. Um, afternoon cycling, just while the car was on charge. Um, yeah, can't be better really. Uh, what was next, Charlie? Uh, fast charger points. Yeah. So here's the biggie really, um, you could do the same as us, you could um, stand a club site, plug it in and go do something else, or if you just change your way of thinking a little bit, we went and bought our shopping beforehand, so that when we arrived we had all the food we needed, um, but what you could do is pitch the caravan, go to Tesco or wherever, uh, and use one of their fast charge points. If you're in there for, I don't know, what are you going to be in there, half hour, an hour maybe? Um, you could get an awful lot of juice in that time, which would also save, if you want to, that eight pound charging fee in the club site. Uh, what's next, Charlie? Region breaking. Oh yeah. Um, I did a test with, and when I first picked it up, the, the regenerative braking it's not sharp, but it's noticeable. It's like, um, I can only liken it to, when I've ridden a four stroke single motorbike, um, you get a load of engine braking with that. And it sort of felt, you know, as strong as that really. So um, what I did, I took it out solo, did some acceleration tests, whether uphill, downhill, whatever, just to see whether, and that regen is, is just a constant. I think you can change it, but for a caravan, it was absolutely perfect because over the Mendips, if you come up over the top of a hill and you crest the hill, and you sort of get that almost sort of free flow bit where you just crest and you're going down the hill, if you just back off, not back off the throttle completely, but a little bit, it just allows that regen to kick in and it settles the caravan um, incredibly well. Anything else on the list? No, that's it. Right, so, so that's it on the list. We're um, What's time now? Midday on Sunday. Got to go back, got to drop Charlie off at football, but I'll report back in a bit. So before I wash the floor on what's been our accommodation for the weekend, uh, let me quickly show you around this Bailey Discovery D42. Now this is gonna be a very quick look because Andrew Ditton is uh, going to do a thorough review on this caravan. I'll link Andrew's channel below. Right, Bailey's curved signature front window, pockets either side, which blew Charlie's mind because he could plug his phone into there, and tuck the phone into there. Uh, long beds, we use these as two singles for me and Charlie. Makes up to a double as well. Um, cubby hole, cupboard space, cupboard space, cupboard space. Same on that side. Now below here is a fridge. Lots of room in there for a two berth caravan. All the controls over there, telly point for watching it from the lounge. Um, gas hob, oven grill, sink, control panels for the Truma heating, switches, a couple of sockets. Washroom is a wet room washroom. So Lou, obviously that shower curtain comes round so that if you're using the shower there, you don't get the Lou wet. Basin, shower controls under here. 
and finally wardrobe at the back um two uh two bigger shelves here hanging rail two smaller shelves here and what's been a lifesaver for this weekend that was wet at times handy shoe locker by the door Today's Monday, yesterday I left you on Sunday as I was dropping Charlie off for football. Uh, good news at 154. So uh, happy days. Um, other good news, I've made it back to the Bailey factory um, up over the Mendips. Um, I filmed something on the way, which I'll show you now with a graph. Now this bit here, there, was, there were 50 limits and lots of traffic and you can see the difference that 50 miles an hour makes. This is probably 60 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour. So your range would be vastly um, extended if you stuck to 50. Um, now this whopper here, this is just where I've gone over a, a section of the Mendip Hill. So you can, you know, you can see how much um, power you're using here. And I've climbed up over the top, um, downhill now, until I've just stopped in this lay-by to film this. Um, now that graph illustrates the range quite nicely. Now. The purpose of this test was to drive it as though, for me, was to drive it as though it was a normal petrol diesel car. Um, now on this Tesla, that really shows up on the range. If you're doing 50, the range is not too far off that, that predicted range. Um, so when we left the site yesterday, it had, a, was it 158 miles predicted range? You know, so it had a few miles to get used to, um, to everything. Right, sad times. The eagle eyed among you will notice I haven't got a caravan on the back anymore. I've just dropped that back over the dispatch yard at Bailey. 90% of the trips that we're likely to do, unless it's a CL without a hookup, um, you know, it will cope with that admirably. You know, it's just when you get that, ex the longer trips, extended tours, or you want to cover more miles in the day, where you might not have the charging points all the time to do it, I think that's the only limiting factor. Uh, so, would I buy one? Yeah, probably. I come at this thinking, no, I wouldn't. Um, you know, it's not going to suit me. So, you know, if, if the tax breaks were there for an electric car, so on and so forth, you know, it would be in a very attractive proposition. Um, so, yeah, bit of a bombshell, really, for me. Um, we've had a great weekend. I've arrived back at the Bailey factory with, with range to spare. I'd like to say 55, uh, 54 miles left to spare, um, even having driven 99 miles to get here. So, um I hope you've enjoyed it. If there's anything I've missed, you know, this is my first weekend in an electric vehicle, a pure electric vehicle. So please let me know, A, if there's something I've missed, B, you might like to see in the future or C, you know, anything else. Um, but can I just say, thank you for watching.